When you're not hard at work or playing games on your PC, your computer could help scientists possibly find a cure for cancer. How? Simply by you downloading the special screensaver that uses the idle time on your personal computer to test cancer drugs. The technique, called peer-to-peer -peer networking, or P2P, uses a program known as Think to run a screensaver that turns the unused power of thousands of PCs into a virtual supercomputer that will not affect your work in any way. What it does is uh, utilize the idle computing time at your computer and it does the simulation, does the calculations whenever uh, you don't use your computer. And when you log on to the internet, uh, your data can be sent back to the central, never, uh, central server and then receive the further information for the uh, calculation. Why do we need a supercomputer to test cancer drugs? Proteins are responsible for cell growth and cell damage. In order to develop drugs that can stop the growth of cancer cells, scientists have to screen millions of potential drug molecules and calculate how they might interact with cancer-causing proteins. This involves billions of calculations, far beyond the capacity of even the most powerful computers. So we are hoping to screen at least uh, 16 uh, protein targets against 250 million small molecules. The number of hits indicate the potential molecule candidates your computer has helped to identify. We need cooperation of many different kinds of scientists working together to go from that exciting hit that you're going to see in your computer to a new drug. So what looks like a simple screensaver could very well be a lifesaver. I'm Jack Penland. Your home computer may have all the bells and whistles, but it's still a model of inefficiency. After all, computers spend most of their time unused, and even when they are in use, they generally use only a fraction of their processing power. But now a handful of companies are interested in using that extra power, and they will pay you for it. It's part of a rapidly developing technology that could change the way computers work. Scott Cohn has our story. Susan Adler is helping find a cure for cancer. Actually, her computer is. I wouldn't have ever believed that this was a possible use of my own computer. While she goes about her job as a research administrator at the University of California, San Francisco, and even after she leaves, a little software program running in the background is computing the effect of individual molecules on the proteins that cause cancer. Thousands of other computer users are running the program too, testing millions of molecules, part of a cancer research project run by Oxford University and funded by chip maker Intel, a project researchers would never even have attempted before. In four months, the project has logged roughly 32,000 years worth of computing time. The concept is called distributed computing, tying individual computers together to create one big one. It's been used before to listen for signals from outer space and to crack computer encryption codes. But the Internet could take distributed computing to a whole new level. You're on this curve that, uh, you know, is, is exponential. And now all of a sudden it, it's potentially, you know, hyper exponential because there's, it's not just a cluster of machines anymore, it's hundreds of thousands of machines you know, inside a large enterprise that can all be turned on to simultaneously do this research. Ed Hubbard is CEO of United Devices in Austin, Texas, one of a handful of companies trying to turn distributed computing into a money maker. It changes the, the nature of what scientists will do. Um, they'll no longer think of, of um, you know, trying to limit the scope of uh, of a particular computational job. Uh, now they'll actually look at uh, a scope that's completely exhaustive and maybe even things they, they wouldn't have tested before that uh, they now can test quite easily. United Devices developed the software for the cancer project. Now it's trying to get companies to tap into the technology and its giant network of computer users. The United Devices network brings together some 800,000 personal computers around the world. That is roughly five times the processing power of the most powerful supercomputer on Earth at a fraction of the cost. 
So biotech companies are looking into distributed computing. Web hosting companies are using it to test their capacity. Even Wall Street firms are using it to test financial models. United Devices engineer David McNett, who helped pioneer distributed computing, says the possibilities are almost limitless. I think where this heads is an open market for CPU cycles or any uh, computer-related resource. But there are still some problems. Because the technology uses the Internet, security is a constant concern. United Devices system is encrypted using a computer that's kept in a concrete vault. Then there's the issue of convincing people to let an outsider tap into their computer. So some companies are offering incentives, cash, and prizes. Susan Adler in San Francisco just won 50,000 airline miles. I'm going to visit my family in New York. <laughs> so, cuz it's a, you know, it's a long round trip from California. But once the bugs are worked out, proponents of distributed computing say the potential is enormous. Computing power no longer a function of how big a machine you can afford. Instead, the vision goes, it'll work like electricity. Just plug into the grid and take the power you need. Now the race is on to become the power company. Scott Cohn, CNBC Business Center, Austin, Texas.